Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. As always, we have a lot to cover and if you are new around here, do consider becoming a subscriber because we drop an update just like this one every single day at 1pm UK time to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space, but also the broader markets. And that is a large part of what we're going to be doing in this video. It has been nothing short of an eventful week for the cryptocurrency space with the launch and facilitation of the first Bitcoin spot ETF in the United States. And I do think largely it was a success given the volumes that we saw into it. However, I'm sure we're all paying attention to what Bitcoin's price is doing. And we are going to be talking about that in this video. But I want to start with Larry Fink's appearance on CNBC yesterday, sharing his thoughts on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market more broadly. He had some really interesting things to say in regards to the ETF, in regards to the digital transformation of markets, his own personal beliefs on the cryptocurrency space, Kathy Wood's 600000 to a $1 million price prediction, and a number of things in between. So I want to spend the first half of the video actually looking at some clips from that interview because I think it's rather interesting. Bit of a side note, I think some people confuse our coverage of BlackRock and their involvement with the cryptocurrency space with our endorsement of BlackRock and their involvement within the cryptocurrency space. I do not believe BlackRock is your friend. I think BlackRock have been uh, extremely influential in the stock market via being the largest shareholder, which has been facilitated by their iShares ETFs, essentially. It's why they're the largest shareholder in most of the uh, S&P companies. We may be moving towards a future where they actually end up controlling uh, governance systems for altcoins. And as you'll see in these clips, in these clips, uh, Larry actually does talk about the um, facilitation of altcoin ETFs at Ethereum ETF CCs. And then ultimately, I do think we're going to go down the sort of market cap with ETFs. I think it's quite obvious you've got the likes of 21 shares, you've got the likes of Grayscale, uh, which was the largest beneficiary in terms of volumes of the Bitcoin spot ETFs due to their conversion of GBTC into the trust into an ETF. Uh, they already offer products with many of the altcoins uh, going from Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, uh, and so on and so forth. So a lot to cover as always. Let's dive into it. Let's start off with clip number one of Larry Fink talking about his views on Bitcoin and the markets. It's the first time we've had an opportunity to talk to you about it, which is uh, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin ETF. We're going to be talking uh, to Gary Gensler, uh, the chair of the SEC, who made that decision uh, reluctantly, maybe even begrudgingly, uh, which was announced uh, just two days ago and we talked a lot about yesterday on the broadcast. How big a deal is that for BlackRock? And this was for you a big switch as well because you were a naysayer for a very, very long time. Yeah, I probably switched for the first three years of thinking about it. I was a naysayer and about two years ago I, I switched. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually, you know, as I said in the last two years, I'm a big believer. Are you a believer personally? Meaning yeah. is the Fink family? Um, a, a Bitcoin I, buyer I, or, or a buyer of this new ETF? Well, now I could do that. I cannot, you know, I don't, I don't want to compete with our clients, so I don't buy single assets. I'll buy mutual funds. I'll buy single ETFs. So I have an opportunity to do that now. Um, but I'm a believer in it because I do believe um, it is an alternative source for wealth holding. I don't believe it's ever going to be a currency. I believe it's an asset class. You don't believe it ever becomes a currency? No, I think we're going to create digital currencies. We're going to use the technology for it. We're going to use the blockchain. Um, How important is that, though, to then the long-term value proposition? Of Bitcoin? Of Bitcoin. If, if it's not something that ultimately <clears throat> becomes a currency, if, it, if, it's, if it's simply, we'll call it digital gold, it's an asset of some sort, what does that mean? It means... In terms of price. I believe, you know, I believe it goes up as the, if the world is more frightened, if people have fearful of geopolitical risk, they're fearful of their own risk. Um, it's no different than what gold represented over thousands of years. It is a it is a it is a asset class that that protects you. Right. And and unlike gold, where we manufacture new gold, we're almost at the ceiling of the most of the amount of so Bitcoin that be created. Somebody like Very interesting. And it's rather strange that I find myself partly agreeing with Larry Fink. I do not think Bitcoin will be a currency. I think it will play the role of a store of value. It's simply impractical as a currency. And we've even seen cracks within the layer twos that are being built on top of Bitcoin. Um, you know, could we maybe have a world where a currency is a derivative of Bitcoin? 
potentially, just like with the gold standard, do you have a Bitcoin standard? That's a very interesting concept. But I don't think Bitcoin has a practical implementation as a currency. I don't think Bitcoin has a role as a currency. I think it has a role of a store of value. And it's very interesting that he likens it to gold. Uh, and actually, we think gold's going to do very well this year. And Bitcoin is in an uptrend against gold, not just the US dollar. Very interesting. Let's move on to him now talking about Kathy Wood's price predictions and giving his thoughts. I mean, when you hear somebody like Kathy Wood, yes. who was on our broadcast yesterday, say right. that her base case, base case is that this turns into a $600,000 a Bitcoin valuation, base case, and a, a you know, million plus uh, in, a, in a super optimistic case. Are you anywhere in her realm? I haven't thought about it. I, I, to me, that what we are trying to do is offer uh, an instrument uh, that, can, uh, that can store wealth. I think if it gets that even close to that high, gold will represent even a bigger value. And, 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 and let's be clear, if you think of digital gold, there's going to be a reference point between gold and Bitcoin. So before we get into the next clips, I'd like to just somewhat pause in regards to his gold comments uh, and actually dive over to the charts and show you guys what we're looking at with gold. So I ultimately believe we'll go right the way out and go on a maybe not a three monthly, a monthly time frame. Uh, and we'll take a look at gold and essentially where it's currently at. It's at new all time highs. You essentially have a microcosm of what was a macrocosm that took place here and you're at this break point today ladies and gentlemen we think the same place is taking out not only do you have a cup and handle structure you're um sort of pushing up against resistance you also have what is potentially an inverse head and shoulders on the likes of gold that would see it go towards three thousand dollars also the bull flag that gold could have been in predicts a higher target than that and you've got this cup and handle playing out so gold is going to do very very well and there is going to be a reference point between uh, gold and bitcoin and we're one of the few channels that look at this if you look at bitcoin against gold not only is bitcoin in a uptrend that it broke out of uh, against gold but it's actually made our first target and is now consolidating ready to push up and move on to uh, higher grounds, perhaps in a similar manner to what Bitcoin is looking at against the dollar. So if gold's going to do well, like Larry Fink suggests, in this world, um, actually Bitcoin's going to do even better. Rather interesting. So I want to move on to Larry now talking um, a little bit more about how the Bitcoin spot ETF uh, went and the kind of digital transformation that is taking place with markets uh, that he believes he's at the, front, the frontier of, obviously being the largest asset manager in the world. Yesterday, we had the first day of Bitcoin ETFs. And our reorganization is, is taking that ethos of what has happened over the last 10 years. We believe ETFs is the technology that's going to transform every asset class. We believe everything will be done through ETFs. Uh, and so we believe this is just the beginning. Let me be clear. I think ETFs are step one. Right. in the technological revolution in the financial markets. Step two is going to be the tokenization of every financial asset. And to me, this is where we believe it's going. So we're looking at uh, Bitcoin. We're looking at ETFs in the right. same manner. These are technological changes that can allow us to move forward. Very interesting comments. And we are moving towards a world that is totally tokenized, whether that's going to be at large for the benefit or negative of humanity. Um, is still to be seen. You know, this new kind of world economic form uh, terminology is transparency. And of course, blockchains have that built into them via being on chain um, and, and, and open source, essentially. Um, so that is a very interesting kind of debate, uh, perhaps for another topic. What I want to do or another time, what I want to do is sort of wrap things up with him talking about the possibility of more crypto ETFs uh, and sort of how yesterday uh, took place in terms of inflows as it relates to Bitcoin. We were very happy with the flows. It appears that we received about 40 percent of the flows yesterday. I mean, one day doesn't make it. Are these new customers? Are these people who um, are coming out of other funds? I mean, Grayscale is the biggest player <laughs> yeah, in this yeah. space right now. Are you trying to take, you know, take share from them in terms of take, taking those clients over? Or are you trying to create a new class of customer? Primarily, we're trying to create um, an opportunity for new customers can invest in, in, in this financial instrument. Longer term, do you now expect other cryptocurrency ETFs? Meaning, do you think that Gary, and we'll talk to him later, uh, Gary like Gensler will, have, will have to approve an Ethereum yeah. ETF? And is that a function of something the SEC has to do? Or do you think that all these things have to go to court first? I couldn't respond to that. I, I, I see value in having an Ethereum ETF, 
as I said, these are just start stepping right. stones towards tokenization. And I, I really do believe this is where we're going to be going. We have the technology to tokenize today. If you want to talk about, think about this. If you had a tokenized right. security and you have a tokenized identity, right. you, Andrew, the moment you buy or sell an instrument, it's known. It's an, on a general ledger right. that is all created together. Um, you want to talk about issues around money laundering and all that. This eliminates all corruption by having a tokenized system. Jamie Dimon disagrees with you on that. But very interesting, and his kind of closing comments there in regards to the issues around money laundering are very contradictory to what Senate alumnus uh, and a number of others are preaching. Um, so very interesting all around, you know, and it's important for us to watch this. Again, our, our coverage of uh, BlackRock is not an endorsement of their involvement in the cryptocurrency space, but it is exceptionally relevant. And if you refuse to believe that, then I don't know really what to say. Um, let's dive over to the Bitcoin chart before we wrap things up. This, of course, is um, a chart that we've been tracking, me personally now, for years and years, you know, since sort of uh, early 2017. Um, but it's, it, it's very much playing out exactly as expected. You know, we were expecting a right shoulder to form uh, around a key level of significance, around about the 48,000 mark. Uh, and it's doing exactly that. And I think there's a lot of worry. You know, if you zoom in on this chart, I think people get very, very worried looking at the kind of price action we saw. There was a small continuation pattern here that did play out uh, somewhat and has now had a very harsh slam down. But actually, this is perfectly healthy. And this is how markets move, guys. You know, we had this smaller head and shoulders that ultimately... Uh, you know, we're now at a stage where we're setting up a larger head and shoulders that could predict 150k um, Bitcoin. And we do think that's going to play out because it's been followed thus far. Very interestingly, uh, others dominance is playing out perfectly as well. This is something that we've been tracking. We had a smaller head and shoulders that projected us a broader head and shoulders neckline uh, that has now played out, broken, come back for a retest and we're about to see continuation. So this is suggesting that altcoins during this period where Bitcoin forwards its right shoulder are actually going to be stronger relative to Bitcoin and Bitcoin is going to give up dominance to the altcoins outside the top 10. Um, but ultimately, I don't think there's anything to worry about. You know, the, the, the plan is playing out pretty damn beautifully, guys. And we've projected it just like we projected in 2023 down here, that there was now a new trend that was about to take place. We followed that. We're at this point here and we don't see deviation or reason to uh, deviate from the trend that's in place, which is an uptrend. It's ultimately going to lead to upside continuation. Uh, and if you look at altcoins, they're kind of hovering around what was resistance that they've broken out of. They're kind of base stage uh, ready for um, movement, which is likely going to coincide with Bitcoin completing its right shoulder and then progressing higher. Um, and this is how markets move. I just want to dive over very quickly to something that I shared with my Patreons. Um, but I'd like to share with you guys, which is a tweet from the man, the myth and the legend, Mr. Francis Hunt, the market sniper, looking at the Japanese Nikkei. And why am I bringing up the Nikkei um, in regards to the crypto space? And the reason is very simple, because markets don't repeat exactly, but they rhyme. And essentially, the Nikkei is a macro of what's happening with Bitcoin on the micro. This is a chart that goes all the way back to 1987. So a very long time. Bitcoin hasn't taken as long to form its current market structure, but they're moving in the exact same fashion. And you're at this point here where you're forming your right shoulder, ready to see that continuation. Um, and this is ultimately how we think this plays out. So that is really all I've got for you in this video, guys. Do not fear. All in crypto is here. Very interesting comments from Larry Fink. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you're not already subscribed, please consider it please consider becoming one. And if you haven't already checked out our Patreon, do dive into the Patreon. Um, I think you will uh, like what we've got there. See you all in the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Have a smashing Saturday and I'll catch you in the next.